Former Congolese politician Jean-Pierre Bemba was sentenced to 18 years in prison by the International Criminal Court on Tuesday for heading a 2002-2003 campaign of rape and murder in neighboring Central African Republic. Bemba, a former Democratic Republic of Congo vice president, in March became the first person to be convicted by the Global War Crimes Court of uh, Crimes of Sexual Violence in War. Now, he also is the first to be held directly responsible for his subordinates' crimes. Judge Sylvia Steiner said troops from the Movement for the Liberation of Congo, which Bemba directed, had acted with particular cruelty when they rampaged through the neighboring country in support of then President Ange Felix Patasse. Now, for some insight into the Bemba ICC case, Charles Jallo, a professor of international law at Florida International University, joins me live via Skype from Miami. Professor Jallo, welcome to Africa 54. Uh, thank you, Vincent, for having me. Now, first, uh, your take, please, on uh, the 18 year sentence for Mr. Bemba. Uh, well, the first thing to note is that it is the highest sentence uh, we've seen from the International Criminal Court. Uh, a couple of other cases have been completed uh, in the Lubanga. We got uh, uh, 12 years and then we had 14 years. So this is the highest sentence. So I think the court is trying to make a point. Now, the interesting point is that he wasn't charged for things he did in the DRC where he ran this, uh, uh, you know, movement, uh, but actually in the neighboring country. How did that happen? That's correct. Well, the, it, it all turns on how the International Criminal Court functions. Uh, basically, if something happens on a country's territory, and in this case, the Central African Republic, uh, they're entitled to invite the prosecutor to investigate, as they did. And it doesn't matter the nationality of the person who committed the crime, so long as they occurred on the territory. So in this case, uh, it turns out that Mr. Bemba uh, fell within their, their sights because of what you pointed out. He was a military commander, and he had a lot of people working underneath him, basically, and they committed a lot of horrendous crimes, especially crimes of sexual violence. So it's a big moment uh, for the ICC. And we know that he was arrested in Brussels, he had traveled to Portugal and later just stayed on in Europe. Is this the best case of how the ICC can work when there is cooperation from uh, the mother country and also other you know, nations across the world? I agree completely. Uh, this is a sample of how good cooperation can help the International Criminal Court. And as you know, Vincent, this has been an ongoing issue for the court, especially when it comes to African states. But it does show that the international community, when it comes together, can actually uh, find some solutions. So in this case, yes, the country is on the, in the region cooperated, but also uh, the Belgian authorities were quite swift in implementing their arrest warrant. So he found himself going to The Hague. I think he was very surprised. But let's face it, this only happens when uh, a person is at least less than the president of a country. Some guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree uh, to some extent, uh, Vincent, although I have to say uh, you have to think about this as a system that international uh, law is building, an international community. Uh, we've seen people who are not presidents, sitting presidents. That's been a bit of a challenge for the court. Uh, in the case of, for example, as you know, Mr. Bashir. Uh, but we've had former presidents, uh, not long out of power, going to The Hague. I, mean, I have uh, you know, Mr. Taylor from the Special Court for Sierra Leone for crimes committed uh, in Sierra Leone, even though he's Lib Liberia's former president. He was tried by the tribunal. We've had uh, Jean Kambanda, the former prime minister, of Rwanda, who was prosecuted by the Rwanda Tribunal in Tanzania. He was also convicted. And of course, Milosevic uh, from the former Yugoslavia. When he uh, was president, he was indicted and he was arrested subsequently. So the glasses, in my view, are half full. <laughs> yeah. uh, just very quickly, would you say that the DRC has been particularly cooperative when it comes to working with the ICC? It has been, and as you know, that's where the first case, the Thomas Lubanga case, came from. So the DRC has been very cooperative. And honestly, I have to say many other African countries have been cooperating with the court. It's just that those that haven't cooperated are very good at attracting attention. Sure. Well, Professor Jallo, thank you very much. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you for having me, Vincent. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Now, Charles Jallo is a professor uh, of international law at Florida International University, speaking to us live via Skype from Miami.